You got a better background than me, but let's just. Let's just... Well, it's either that or my bedroom, so it's probably better to. <laughs> All right. So, um, hey, my name is Alan, and uh, I am with. Uh, so I started a blog on hiking and camping called dustyhikers.com. And um, I think like a lot of people, I am interested in getting more gear to go on maybe longer, more extended hiking adventures. But I also don't want to spend $2,000, you know, to get in with good equipment. So why don't you just um, introduce yourself and then I have a series of questions about buying used camping gear and, and we can talk about your business as well. Sure. So my name's Dallas. I own Lower Gear Outdoors. Um, been running this for about 18 years. Uh, we started out as a, we sort of did it in reverse order. We started out as rentals only and then got into retail maybe about 10 years ago. Uh, fairly classic story. Did this out of the house for a while and then a warehouse. And now we have maybe a total of 10,000 square feet of different warehouse and retail spaces and the retail and warehousing operations. Um, hike, long time hiker, um, done, I wear knee braces because I got about 10,000 miles under on them, a um, lot up in the Sierras. And at a retail store, we, in addition to rent gear, we do also sell a lot of used gear. Um, as, yeah, that, as, yeah, that's as, right. And you're based in Arizona, right? Uh, Tempe, Arizona, yeah, the suburb of Phoenix. Okay, and and for your uh, used sales online, do you sell like all over the U.S.? We do more used gear sales at the store. Okay. <clears throat> Just the nature of it, it's a uh, people feel a little more comfortable with it, uh, actually being able to see it in person. But we do sell some things that we feel like there's not much of a quality issue with that we feel real comfortable being able to describe to somebody to manage expectations, if you will, yeah. uh, backpacking tents and, and backpacks. There are just certain, there are a few things that have less qualitative considerations than others. A sleeping bag, for instance, has a lot of qualitative considerations to what somebody may like or not like about it, but a backpacks, tents, other uh, hard goods, if uh, are a little bit easier to express exactly via pictures or descriptions to what somebody's actually going to get if they're 2,000 miles away from you. Yeah, so that, that's good. So that's kind of my first question was, you know, if somebody's thinking about doing this versus buying used gear from like REI, the first question is, you know, should, might be like, should I even buy used camping gear? Like, why would I even think about doing that other than saving money? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, there is a greater trend to reuse and, you know, more of a green environment, if you will. So there is some impetus there. However, um, mostly it is a lot of people saving money. They don't know whether they're going to be doing this a lot. Um, in some cases they'll rent, but they may want to do it, figure, well, I'm going to do this once a year. So rather than rent it every time I will buy, but I just, I just don't want to shell out a lot uh, for new. It's particularly in uh, the opportunity to save money is better in backpacking gear than it is family camping gear because everything else being equal, backpacking gear is more expensive. Right. If you just want to go out on a trip you're probably, and you want decent stuff, you're looking north of $1,000 new. And, uh, but you- for, for backpacking? For backpacking. Right. Yeah, by the time you add a decent tent, sleeping gear, stoves, uh, the backpack itself is right. 250. The, the tent can be 250 and up. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't take a whole lot to get north of 1,000 for, for a decent selection of gear. You could rent that for maybe 150, but then you just have to do it every time again. Um, so use offers some opportunity in between the two um, to save money, but not necessarily, but have something at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I think another question that uh, people might be interested in is, you know, what's the best gear to buy you? So you already said that uh, just 
camping, like family camping, car camping gear, probably, you know, it, you could just go and buy it brand new because it's not that expensive anyway. So for hiking gear, like which items do you think are the best ones to buy used and whether, you know, you should like go for high end stuff or mid tier stuff or, or what are your thoughts on that? Just thinking, you know, somebody that's interested in doing this. Uh, we probably sell more used backpacks than anything else because that's one of the cleanest things that uh, you can evaluate. Um, it's sort of hard to hide uh, or have to be worried about, worried about hidden damages to a backpack. Um, you don't have to worry about like in a tent, you have to at least think about, well, if there's a hole in the corner, I won't know about it till it rains, uh, but I'm not yeah. really gonna spend two hours checking this thing out to find out. A backpack, you can take a quick look at the buckles and the straps, um, uh, uh, the pouch on the back, is it ripped? I mean, it, it's it's used, so there's gonna be wear and tear on it, but those things can last 15 years. That's the consideration for used gear in that it just has a certain items have a really long life cycle. Yeah. Um, and so backpacks come to mind. Um, Tents can, particularly the backpacking ones where they're not, um, uh, it's just there, there's less volume there that you have to uh, check out. You're looking at something that's maybe three foot, by seven foot in dimensions for like a one person tent as opposed yeah. to a, a large family camping tent, which just greater surface areas, so there's more that could go wrong with it. Right. Um, and uh, Mattress pads are pretty easy if you trust who you're buying it from. Um, we well, what do you say, yeah, what do you, up, sorry, yeah, sorry, I was gonna say, yeah, talk about lower gear and like what what process you guys go through when you so you're you're buying gear new to rent it and then when it gets to a certain point you sell it, or do you also buy used gear and resell it? Um our our used gear inventory comes from uh, three or four main sources. We do retire our rental inventory. Okay. And that may be, there's a couple of reasons for that. There might be an aesthetic problem that it just looks bad going out as a rental, but there's no functional problem with it. Right. If you own it, you could care less, but if you rent it, you might be pickier, right? Yeah. So we retire tents and packs and stuff. Maybe a pack has a, a pine tar uh, stain on it that we can't get out it doesn't affect it any and if you own it and you can save a hundred dollars you can care less about it right um we also buy stuff somebody needs some cash they're cleaning out a garage or whatever they back up their car and they got a trunk load of it um we do take some in on consignment and um other times somebody just has something I mean, we do a certain amount of trading. So those are the main sources of it. If we have something like a mattress pad, then we will pump it up, lean it up against a wall. Uh, and then if it's still leaning up in the morning, we know it holds air. If it, <laughs> that, that's your uh, mattress. You don't sleep yeah. on it one night and see if it still works. <laughs> yeah, if, if, it's, uh, if it's falling down, we don't know whether it fell down five minutes before we walk back in the door or five minutes after we left the night before. So those we just sell off for like 10 bucks as okay. is. We have customers that will sometimes come in and buy five, 10, 20 of them at a time. And they'll, it's not worth our time to look for the leak. Right. Um, but so, they could fix the leak, right? Air overnight, which is enough. Um, you could fix the leak if you had to. Yes, most cases. Sometimes if it's a leak in a seam, those are problematic. But the okay. ones that we sell as used, as va as uh, viable, they'll hold air. Those we've all tested. All right. So you do the, the one night standing up test. Yeah. Um, yeah. How satisfied are your customers when you sell them used gear? Do they bring stuff back or are they like, oh my gosh, I saved a hundred dollars. I can't, this is awesome. Yeah, we have a lot of repeat customers that come in and they're just gradually adding to their gear kit as uh budgets allow and um i haven't really had much in the way of any returns uh we do have a policy like if let's say you have a tent 
and yeah. I don't, uh, they don't want to spend the time to set it up all the way um, and say, look, take it home. Uh, here's what the notes on it says. It says it's got a repair in the mesh or whatever it is. If you find anything that's out of the ordinary for, based on the price you pay, bring it back. We'll swap you out for another one. Okay. So they're not really, they're not doing the pig and a poke kind of thing. If they want to set it up fully, then that uh, at the store before they go out, that's perfectly fine as, as well. But I haven't had uh, much in the way of, I don't know if I've had any returns. Um, you know, every now and then somebody will say, well, I'll take a used one. And basically they, they used it for a night and brought it back. Maybe they should have just rented. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it, that's not been much of an issue. We try to be, it's not worth the hassle on our part to have to deal with returns. So we're trying to be really upfront about the condition. If there's sure, anything right, that's not right. immediately noticeable when somebody can make their own decision, whether that's acceptable. Yeah. But, but you do sell used gear online, right? Yes. Okay. So that is an option. All right. People don't have to go to the yeah. store. How much money can someone expect to save over retail? So if they're getting, you know, a 250, what, what would be a $250 retail backpack for, for backpacking, how much would that go? We typically, yeah, as a starting point, it's about half of retail. Oh, wow. So and you could save, you could get a really nice, like gear set for like 500 bucks. Correct. Yeah. So we can uh, we use half as a starting point. If it's an exceptional condition, it might be a few percentage points higher. And if there's a particular problem that somebody needs to take on as a project, it might be 20% of retail. You know, so it's again, it sort of gets in that thing. We might tell someone <clears throat> um, we've got three stoves here. One of them's uh, got a burner problem on this side, and the other one's got a burner problem on this side. You can buy these things for ten dollars each if you want to put it together. It's just not worth our time for me to pay somebody on the staff to come up with one good one, as an example. Right, but, but, but that's all. Things, but but that's all explained. Like when the person buys it, they know this, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we will have it priced as a project, or uh, a do it. This is going to require some do-it-yourselfness. Uh, right. Like, you know, this one's got a bad zipper. If you can live with it, we can't sell it as perfectly fine. Right. But you could, if you want to fix a zipper or replace the zipper with uh, some Velcro kind of things, um, yeah. just to have it and you want it for 10 cents on the dollar, here's your opportunity. Right. Um, let's see, another question. So what, what do you do, uh, what do you all do before you sell this gear as far as like cleaning it? What, what's your process there? Like, a, like a, 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 you know, you were saying earlier that um, sleeping bags, people are a little more finicky about, but what do you, what do you all do before you sell it? We, we, we have um, front loader washing machines. So we do the mm -hmm. same process with a rental. When they just come back in, <clears throat> They're literally just in a front loading washing machine. We wash it in Tide or whatever regular laundry detergent is avail available. And then we hang them out in the Arizona sun, which we have some advantages by geography here. Uh, lots of ultraviolet sanitation <laughs> um, and right. stuff can dry in 10 minutes in the summer. So, I mean, we have right. a real quick turnaround time for tents and sleeping bags being able to uh, flip those around to the next renter if we're selling something used it's the same process so if we do bring i don't bring in a lot of sleeping bags in from other people but if we do it's the same washing process we check out the zippers to make sure those are all right if they're not they're marked accordingly and priced accordingly yeah i think um i think there's some you know perception i mean certainly i have this too that um, you know, if I buy something new, someone else has slept in this and, you know, their kids threw up on the floor of the tent and, you know, I'm just getting this thing, right? But we'll spend $300 to go sleep in a bed that somebody slept in the night before at a hotel. And of course, they've changed the sheets, right? They went, they, they put the sheets in a front loading washing machine with Tide and then dried them and put them on the bed. And we're totally fine with that. I think, um, 
you know, but, but there are certain like things that people won't do probably like buying shoes. You probably don't sell any used hiking boots because it's just too personal. And it's a, that is one of those things. Um, there's a couple of things that are problematic used. Um, shoes are one of them because that can, it's really hard to, to tell the condition. I mean, you can look at a shoe and see if there's any holes in it, but you can't really tell the level of compression that might be in the sole. Um, right. That unless you've got a fairly trained eye on that, you just don't know. In uh, the fit and everything on the, on the shoes is really a personal kind of thing. Right. Some people have problem buying used climbing gear. Now we don't sell any of it to speak mm -hmm. of. But some people don't want to be dangling from a rope that, that they don't know personally where that has been. Um, yeah, right. That, that's really good that, advice. I, I wouldn't buy probably used unless I knew the person really well that I was buying it from. And yeah, but yeah you're right. Something like that, where it's kind of like your life could be on the line. It's probably better to get brand new stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's out there and you'll see ads for it. But just anecdotally, we've heard some resistance to anybody having much interest in that. Um, sleeping bags, uh, I mean, just the point about the hotel is dead on. Uh, we always tell people do have a question whether they're renting it or buying used. And without being flippant about it, we basically say, well, here's what we do. And I can guarantee you the sleeping bag is cleaner than the comforter at a Four Seasons hotel. Because <laughs> that's right. the comforter is not put, you know, that's to say you're on the same comforter that the guy last night was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never, I'm never staying at a hotel, but I'm never staying at a hotel again. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it, I so, mean, uh, and, and really, because I was thinking about this today, Dallas, I mean, everyone uses used gear all the time, unless you pulled it out of the box before you went on your hiking trip, which is never a good idea. Anyway, you should always use your gear before you get out there at night in the rain, trying to set up your tent. So you're Correct. always really using used gear. I mean, my garage is full of crap from, you know, 30 years ago and we use it for car camping and stuff. And some, sometimes it's been sitting in a box for like four years. We don't take it out and wash it, you know? Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, reality and perception sometimes get in the way of each other. Um, but uh, I mean, anytime you put on a, if you try on a jacket at the men's store, well, you're probably not the first person that's tried on the jacket and you're just yeah. buying it off the shelf. So, I mean, there are examples um, like that. Um, sleeping bags, again, just to uh, pick it up on that just a little bit more. You do need to assume on a use, this is one consideration. If you have a 35 degree sleeping bag and it's been through a number of washings or it's just been used over time uh, you could assume that when you buy it maybe you want to buy it as a 40 degree sleeping bag okay that's really it would have lost, some, it would have lost some of its loft that's really time. really yeah that's really really good advice i mean i saw that i have a 30 degree bag and i was sleeping just outside one night i just slept on the ground and it was about 40 and I was freezing to death, right? But that bag is quite old now. I need to replace it. Um, it, it so yeah, I was going to ask you more about like, just from all of your experience uh, renting equipment and selling used equipment, what are some like top Dallas ninja tips for someone that wants to consider, you know, getting a full gear load out through used equipment? Like what are the, what are, what are some like the top three tips that you would give somebody? Um, you have to consider whether the a savings in a used item is uh, really worth it. Let's take a, um, I mean, just a, some obscure kind of thing. You could have two different things. You could have a high, a, let's say a set of hiking poles and a water filter, for example. Yeah. They're both available at half cost. The hiking poles you can look at, there's absolutely no reason those things won't last for forever. forever. I mean, right. what's, what's going to wear out, right? <laughs> yeah. But a water filter, so the fact that somebody's gone 100 miles on a hiking uh, poles won't make any difference. If somebody's gone 100 miles with a water filter, there's some degradation in the filter. So you're going to have to replace that filter at some point. And might you be better off, if you're only, depending on your usage, maybe just better off just getting a new filter. 
Um, so there are a few things where there's really not great savings over the long haul. Uh, it would be somewhat akin to a, a used car is a lot less money, but if you got to spend a lot of money on maintenance, then it's not, maybe the savings isn't really there. Right. Um, if so, if you can get used gear that is fairly recent vintage, uh, that would be um, a good a good point. And then and then, but you could feel perfectly comfortable with some of the things we were talking about earlier: hiking poles. Uh, it's real evident if there's something wrong or not. Uh, backpacks. It's real evident. Tents. If you have a little bit of patience to set it up, it can be pretty evident. Although there can be um, degradation in the in the materials and those if it's been outside a lot you yeah. may not see anything but there could be some hidden get ready to leak kind of things but those aren't really hard to fix if they are um if you get a sleeping bag i would uh i would take everything out of its stuff sack if you've got the time and opportunity to do it check mm -hmm. for zippers make sure they're going all the way up and down um and again maybe they don't but the fact that you can get it for a third of the price or half the price may make yeah. that inconvenience well worth it. Um, like a lot of zippers will work from the top down, but not from the bottom up if they had that feature originally. Yeah. I never use that feature anyway. So if that one, if I could get something for half price and that was the only thing wrong with it, I could care less. Right. Um, so th those would be some considerations as you're looking at used gear. Yeah, what about buying really expensive high-end gear used? Is that a good way to save a ton of money or would you go for more recent mid-tier gear or something like that? Um, well, let's take a tent, for example. If you could, if a tent was, uh, if you could get a $300 tent for $150, that that is probably gonna be a much better tent than a new $150 tent. Right. That's really, yeah, that's really good. That's good advice. Um, you know, unless there's just something really obvious with it. But the great thing about tents, even, I mean, yeah, you could have a, a rip in it a foot long, but uh, tape makes it just as good as new. It's just got this little Frankenstein stitch in it, uh, if it's right. in the mesh or that kind of thing, but you can make it as good as new. So right. that's, that's well worth it. Uh, so there's little that will just kill a tent, although, uh, you know, outside of just you know, totally ripped to shreds by a raccoon or that kind of thing, uh, <laughs> yeah. where the materials, where the, where the materials are, are missing. But generally, um, I mean, we, we saw a lot of kayaks, for example, which was a whole different animal than yeah. this. Absolutely. Uh, if you can, if you can get an $800 kayak for $400, it's all, it's 10 times better than a new $400 kayak. Do you sell those online? Do you ship those? No. We ship kayaks new, uh, but not uh, not news. Not that sort of falls okay. into that category. It's a little bit harder to uh, evaluate that from afar. I mean, we'll right. sell some, like I've got a guy coming in. I'm in Phoenix. I've got a guy coming in from San Diego next week to pick up a used one. But I spent, you know, 30 minutes with him on FaceTime or whatever, just showing, okay, yeah. now here's what you're going to see. And, you know, before you make this six-hour drive over here, I don't want yeah. to. I'm going to waste your time or mine. And uh, so that, that works out on that. But um, not, we don't ship many used kayaks. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, Dallas, I thank you for your time. And I think this is really useful. So I think anybody that's considering buying used uh, hiking gear, I think that there's some real nuggets in here that you've provided. Where can people find uh, your company? So we're in Tip, Arizona. Our website is lowergear.com. Okay. Um, so I'll, put a, I'll put yeah. a link in the description of the video for that. All right. Yeah, there's a category of used gear, or it's usually one of those things. They just call and see what we got because it changes all the time. Somebody might come in this afternoon and want to get rid of stuff. And uh, so it, it comes and goes faster than what we can update it on the site on. Okay. So people could also call you and ask for the used gear that you have, and you would ship it to them? We can, yes. Yeah. Okay. As long as there's, yeah, that's just one of those things. We want to, uh, for both of our sakes, we want to be perfectly clear about the condition and send pictures and make sure everybody's on the same page. Otherwise, it's not worth me. Uh, it's not worth a hundred dollars.
fail to have to deal with two hours of figuring out somebody's not satisfied or dealing with the return right, and all that. I right. just want to not make the sale. So we it, we just uh, we we want to be comfortable with it on both sides. Hey, uh, final question. What if somebody said, uh, Dallas, uh, my wife and I are going to go on a five day backpacking trip and we don't want to spend two thousand dollars. Could you put together two full kits for us that have, uh, you know, a two person tent, two backpacks, sleeping pads, a cooking stove and two sets of hiking sticks? Would you do that if somebody made that request? Yeah, we have packages. We have rental packages on the site. Um, for exactly that, a backpacking package for two would pretty right. much include just exactly everything that you listed on that. If somebody wanted to do that used, um, sure, we've probably we've got it, um, but we would have to probably here. Let me take your phone. <laughs> let me get yeah. your phone number, and I'll call you back. See exactly what combination we have. Okay, awesome. Like, I've got I've got some lakey hiking poles but i've got two mismatched sleeping bags but here uh, one of them's in the one's rated at 35 one's at 20 that kind of thing yeah uh, or you know it might be able to make a perfectly matched set the exact same thing they would rent all right well thank you very much and um before i post the video i'll send it to you and you can check it out all right Good all right with you. okay right. thank you all right yep. bye-bye we'll see you Okay, so I think that that was really good information. I didn't know what to expect going into this, um, but I think I might buy some used camping or hiking equipment for me and my wife because we're planning to go on a, an extended hiking trip and I really don't want to spend $2,000 to get really good gear. And I think his point about you know buying a $300 tent for $150 you're going to get a much better used $300 tent. That tent's going to be way better and perform much better than a brand new $150 tent. Um, if this, if you found this uh, video useful, hit the like button. Um, we upload videos every week. Consider subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye.